Next, let's go ahead and create the footprint. Let's see, let's edit this. We'll call this, or you click the edit button. We'll call this the manufacturer part number. For the description, I'd call this something like two hole, uh, two position, or something descriptive about the dimensions probably. Two position header, and this is 19, and the width and 22.1 millimeters in the height. X 19 millimeter and Y 22 millimeter. Put a underscore. I don't put spaces in my footprints, footprint names, type standard. That's fine. The height of the device is whatever the data sheet says. 9.35. And the area is zero uh, It's how many square inches. So 0.648 square inches. Look okay. For through hole devices, pin one is, will be at the origin. For surface mount chips or devices, the center of gravity of the device sh is where the origin should be. So the diameter is three millimeters plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Our properties. Let's change to millimeter very quickly. I like how you can just easily change that. And just as a quick note, if you don't have Altium right now, that's fine. You can follow along with this tutorial by going to Altium's website where you can get a free trial. And the link is in the description below. Well, first of all, let's make sure we're on a good grid. We're, our grid is on 0 0.127 millimeter grid. Okay, so let's change the grid. Go to view grids and set global snap grid. You can set it as 0 0.1 millimeter, you know, and then click OK. Now our global grid is this. If you want a shortcut to that, you could do G on your keyboard and then select your grid accordingly. And you get options for both units. That's really cool. Right, now let's go ahead and place pin. We, we go to place pad and then we have a surface mount pad. Now by default, you might get a circular pad. I get this because I made a surface mount pad before. For layer, choose multi-layer. I'll hide the preview and then show the preview. Okay, let's hide it. Electrical type, load, designator, one pin package length no shape will be circular or round x and y right the pad itself needs to be greater than the hole but let's let's set the hole size first the hold size is three millimeter. The tolerance, oh, this is, okay, that's pretty big. The tolerance is 0 0.1 in the plus and 0 0.1 in the minus. Let's double check the data sheet. Yeah, that's true. So how do we calculate this pad size? Well, in one of my other videos, I talked about getting a land pattern calculator. It's free from PCB libraries. And what this gives you is a calculator where you can put in the hold size, 
or the lead size even, it calculates the hold size and then you get the numbers you need. So now I have the hold size 3.0 millimeters. The calculated pad is 4.50. We're going to copy that value and put it in Altium. Hit tab. That's an X and Y direction. It would be the size. Okay, let's zoom out. This is comically large. All right. Place our hole. Now, where do we place this other hole? It's the data sheet. Oh, hit tab to not move the window. And 12.7 millimeters to offset to the right there. It's at coordinate. See, this first pad was at coordinate zero, zero. Well, I think we need to place the pad first. Right click end mode, and then click on this pad again, go to properties, then change the coordinate after it's already been placed 12.7 millimeter and then zero millimeter and hit tab. You can also change the rotation. Now that's good. Let's say for now, then we will place our other through holes. Right, let's place these two holes. I did a quick calculation in my IPC calculator. We'll place a pad and hit tab, we're going to change the property for this. This designator, I wouldn't even give it a designator really. This multi layer electrical type. So the hold size is 1.1 millimeter, plus or minus 0 0.1. Then the pad stack shape, 1.65 millimeter, 1.65. Let's click on our plus. Place that one and place that other one. Right click and you're done with that. Now click on the first one, click on properties. We'll change the coordinate based on the data sheet. This is how far from hole number one is the question. Based on some calculations I did off screen, it, this is 3.81, this distance. Y coordinate is uh, my mistake. The Y coordinate is this distance 7.62 because the origin is along here in the Y. So 7.62. Hit tab. Let's lock that in. All right, over here, we have this, this pad stacks properties. Actually, let me pin this window so it stops sliding out the way. Looking at the footprint, we have Y direction, definitely 7.62, okay. And then the X direction would be 3.81 plus 5.08, plus or minus 0 0.05. I need to add 3.81 and 5.08. So 3.81 plus 5.08 is 8.89. Hit tap. And then we have 7.62. Hit tap. Let's lock that in. Okay, let's place this outline. Place line. Line width 0.254 millimeters. That's a good thickness. Top overlay would be, yeah, this is good. Start drawing from the origin. And this way I can easily figure out if I'm hitting my dimensions. So while you're in this mode, you can right click and drag to move the window. Now, if you just right click and let go, like a normal click, you're going to get out of the mode. You don't want to do that. So this is 19.08 in the, or 22.1 in the Y direction. We need 11.05 in the negative Y direction. 11.1 is fine. Click. You can click along the way too. 
19.08. Let's call it 19.1. Some people like the corner, like the more less sharp edges. That's perfectly fine. You can do that if you want. It's up to you. The positive direction. Now, my positive direction, like in the Y axis, would be half of the 22.1. I would just call it 22.2, .2, so 11.1 .1 in the Y direction. Zero in the X direction, yeah. And then go back to zero. Right click. And right click to get out the mode. Let's save this. We're going to move our, an object. Let's click. Excuse me. Right. Now, let's do Shift S to darken or to uh, gray out these pads. Now we're just focused on this bounding box. I did some calculations to know where the center of this bounding box needs to be in the X and the Y axis. Select the entire box, zoom in, and make sure this indicator shows up right dead in the center. And we're gonna zoom out and place this right around in the Y direction, the Y coordinate we have 8.44. Now I'm going to go north of this because I don't want the pads to drill through the outline. And then that's around 8.95. That eh, seems fine to me. And then we have the 6.275. I want 6.35. How do I have such a fine grid? Well, let's go, let go of this. You can hit G on your keyboard and turn it to the 0 0.025 millimeter grid. All right. So the center is where it needs to be. Let's shift S until we get back to where we were. And then we need some text. Let's add a text and to add a reference designator. We'll put designator right here. You just put, oh, hit tab, okay. Type dot designator, capital D, with a dot in front. And then you place that. Right mouse button and drag to move this around. Let's go ahead and save this footprint. For the 3D body, but let's get it from the manufacturer's website. Download the step model. So I, I put my 3D model in this folder and Go to place 3D body to place a 3D model. Okay, now that we have this, we'll go start to place it right. Hopefully this is the proper location. Right click to end that mode. Now let's go to view 3D layout mode. Okay, hold on the shift key. Use the right mouse button to move this thing around. Mm, interesting. I'm going to map the base of this model with the footprint. So go to Tools, 3D Body Placement, Align Face with Board. So if, look at the indicator at the bottom. It says, pick a 3D body. So 
So first we pick the 3D model. Then it says choose the face. I'm going to choose this face. Boom. Just like that. Now I'm going to rotate this. Move this around with the right mouse button. And then we can change the rotation as needed. And the X axis, no. And the Z axis, I want it to be rotated 180 degrees. There we go. Cool. Save the footprint. So let's go back to your schematic library. This part, we're going to add footprint. You can browse for the footprints you do have in your LiPo battery PCB. Click OK. You can also preview the 3D. Hold shift to rotate with right mouse button. 2D view, click OK. Looks good. Notice I don't have a mounting hole thing for this, uh, like a pin numbers for the mounting holes, but looks like we don't need that. Now save this part, the schematic symbol with this footprint. If you're done with a design, whether in Altium or Eagle for now, you can Upload your design to Altium 365's Altium Online Viewer. This is different from the downloadable free viewer. This is a new thing that Altium came up with, and you can upload your design and see them in 3D for the PCB and also see the schematic, and you won't be bound by a specific computer that has Altium or Eagle to look at your designs. So I think that's really cool. Feel free to upload your own design at the end of this tutorial series.